Hello viewers, Super GT here. Recently on GT7 I signed with BMW as my manufacturer and that turned out to be a massive mistake because this is a car that wants to kill you at any given moment. And you can see, as soon as you push, this car just wants to spin. It wants to kill you. However, with the recent update 1.13, they improved the traction on rear wheel drive cars, including the BMW. So I thought I'd give it another try. And this was for a very short manufacturer's season. We're gonna jump in to round number two at Spa. Now this was an interesting round because um, of the weather and there was a very high chance or probability that we would see some rain. If you look at the radar on the bottom right. It looked as though it already had rained on this uh, practice session here. Now the first thing I noticed about the car, through the slow corners is fine, through the fast corners, um, you see there, Taking Eau Rouge, Radion, just fine. Rivage here, this is a good test for the handling. This is the type of corner where previously I would have died every time. But now the car is a lot more stable. And that bodes well for this race. And let me tell you, this was about to be a really good race. So let's jump in to qualifying. We're on the new 24 hour layout, as you can see, jumping out of this uh, other pit lane here. And. As we go into qualifying, there was some moisture on the circuit, as you can see here with the moist meter, which isn't zero. If we jump onto the track, you see as well some, uh, some trails of water coming off of the car in front. Now, this is our first flying lap. I'm sat here behind the Subaru, which at the moment is probably one of the strongest, if not the strongest car in Group 3. So I'm in a fairly decent position here just to sit behind that car and monitor myself against it. Now through the first hairpin, through there just fine. And actually losing a bit of speed compared to the Subaru. You see already I've been gapped. Uh, so it turns out that this car, it just isn't very good in slow corners. Through medium and high speed, it's, it's not too bad. But let's not forget that the BMW M6 is a big chunky boy. And therefore it doesn't really lend itself to maneuverability through slow turns. Uh, through the fast sweeping section of the mid uh, area of this track it was okay on the brakes here it was actually decent you see they're actually caught back up with the Subaru through the chicane did feel a bit slow but across the line let's see what our lap time is going to be well it's actually incredibly close 0.067 away from pole position at the end of that lap but the track is getting drier and drier as there's no rain and so presumably the track is getting quicker and quicker and uh you see the end, of the end of the first split on my second lap, three tenths down. However, at the end of the second split, I was near enough one tenth up on the pole position time. I, I, all I need to do really is just not mess up this final chicane. And I'd have a very good chance of pole position, or at least provisional pole. Because we're only about halfway through this session. Catching up with the Subaru, it seems to be fairly even paced with that Subaru actually. Coming up to the finish line of this lap, we go to pole position one tenth ahead of Evan, who is the Subaru in front. And then just moments later, um, I get displaced down into second as someone just goes a tiny bit quicker. But by this point, you can see there's a lot less moisture on the circuit. So the track is drier, it's getting drier and drier as the session goes on. And we are good enough for slicks at this moment. We're on the soft tyre. Uh, so if I could just improve this lap, then I could potentially be on pole. Four tenths up on my personal best after the first split alone. So all I need to do really is just keep this kind of speed up from here to the end. Potentially we are going to improve our lap time of a 2.14.6 at this point in time. Into Rivage, squaring off the corner on the exit. A bit of a squirm, but not too bad. And then through the left hander down the hill. The car just actually really nice through this middle sector. Down the hill towards Puon. Fast corner this one. Get the car slowed down. Hit the apex back on the power. And that's going to propel you downhill towards uh, the fast sweeping chicane here. On the brakes about 75 metres before the corner get the car in. And you can see here through this middle sector uh, gaining on the Subaru. In fact the Subaru actually bails out of his lap perhaps conscious that he doesn't want to give me a slipstream up the back straight and that you know he messed up his own lap 
wasn't much to gain by continuing. So three and a half temps up on the whole position time at this point here. And all we got to do, take Blanchemont. Blanchemont's fairly easy in uh, this kind of car. We just take a bit of the extra tarmac on the right. Flat out easily through there. Spot on your braking point, 150 metres before the corner. The first board, look at that. And then chuck the car in over that kerb, really abuse that kerb. Turn it left through the final chicane. And then it's a drive to the line. What's it going to be? It's going to be pole position by four tenths of a second. In fact, actually, Tijani goes slightly quicker. And then I continued one more lap. Unfortunately, I made this mistake here. You see a little bit too narrow on the apex, too wide on the exit. And this lap would not be an improvement. So I was just hoping that no one else would go quicker. You can see they're quarter of a second down on my PB. Crossing the line, I didn't improve. But thankfully, no one else did either. And I remained on pole position, starting this race in first. So it actually looks like the BMW has improved massively. And on that uh, positive note, we're going to jump into the FIA intro. Oh, and I put on medium tyres. <laughs> Honoured to be featured in the brand new manufacturer intro there. Absolutely incredible stuff. Let's take a look at the grid, or at least let's take a look at the pole position. Oh, oh, it's me, I forgot about that. So yeah, thankful for you know, thankful for BMW boys back at Bavaria. And thank you as well to um drone insurance basically. Because yeah, I killed my drone. Wasn't a pretty scene really. But um that's a bit of a tangent. Let's go into this race. As uh, we begin 12 laps of Spa. Let's get started. Up the hill through Eau Rouge, through Radion. Let's try and settle into this one. Now, for those wondering about the weather conditions, I kind of, well, I mean, through through testing it, I think we've come to a conclusion um, that the start of the race, uh, in terms of the weather, basically, the weather is the same in the race as it is in qualifying. It mimics it exactly. So the qualifying was a little bit damp at the beginning. This is exactly the same. It's a little bit damp at the start. Um, so it mirrors the exact same conditions. I went on the medium tyre as I didn't really want to pit in this race. You lose about 30 seconds doing a pit stop uh, at this track. Very long pit lane here. We didn't bother with that. We're just going on the medium tyres, which is the tyres going to last. You could go on the soft, but um, that tyre isn't really going to last the entire race so medium is the best compromise first lap here we are beginning just to edge clear slightly not not a huge amount just uh, six seven tenths making our gap nice and comfortable as uh, just commanding the race from the front of the pack and it seems as though uh, the guys behind are also on the medium tire if um if they were very quickly catching up with me i would have suspected they would be on the soft but it doesn't look like that's the case so round out onto the uh, back straight here got a nice nine tenth gap actually almost a second in front they're out of slipstream range but as i kind of discovered in qualifying this car has an inherent weakness which is these slow corners it just really does not turn and in my previous video around into lagos in this car i slated this car a lot and one of the criticisms i leveled at it is that it turns um, well actually i i think i said that the titanic turns quicker and to be fair, that's kind of still true. In slow corners, at least. I have seen the Titanic turn quicker, apart from, obviously, the iceberg bit. But still, um, through the first hairpin, slow corner, the car just doesn't really like it at all. And the gap was a second, but now it's back down to half a second. So it seems as though I'm losing all of my time on one part of the track, which is sort of the end of the lap slash start of the lap, that area final chicane slash first hairpin and 
it's that area of the circle where I'm definitely weak. So this man here in the Subaru, looking for a move, I'll defend this one. I want to just stay in the lead, have track position, and keep the cars behind at bay for as long as possible. So it wasn't much of an attack there. I think he was quite happy just to, okay, just play it patient, sit behind. It's only lap two of 12, and um, it's quite a long lap here at Spa. So this one is going to be well over 20 minutes, in length, maybe about half an hour in fact. So it's a fairly lengthy race. So down the hill. Um, sat here just three tenths ahead of the Subaru. Um, but we're not going to lose our cool, just keep it nice and calm. Um, what I would say is that the previous update, of, or sorry, before update 1.13, it felt as though you're always driving on the edge. And you couldn't really push the car 100% because you just felt as though you were going to spin out at any given moment. But now you can actually have the confidence to push the car. I do think it's a little bit too easy on the front end going into corners. Um, I kind of liked it before. And now certainly at least on the exit of corners, um, in, in the real drive cars, you're not just going to die from snap oversteer every time. But I think overall 1.13 physics update is a slightly positive thing. Um, although I, I would like some compromise and have sort of the uneasiness of corner entry to return. Um, anyway, I digress because I was trying to pull away there and the gap kept going up to about eight, nine tenths at the end of the lap. But then through the hairpins, you see uh, Mr. Pan getting very close, flashing his lights. Not quite close enough to go for a move here. But I think he was aware that he was gaining on that part of the track. He was very sure that through the first corner, up the uh, Eau Rouge Radion complex, then down the Camel Strait. He knew that he was gaining, and I knew he was gaining. He was probably sure that I was looking in the rear view mirror at that point of the circuit. Into the final corner, gap here 1.2, and then it just seems so clumsy through this turn. Um, but the gap remains about one second or just under. We set the fast lap of the race, albeit for two seconds. Some of the guys behind just go a tiny bit quicker. Into the first corner. Can we just get that gap? That's all I need. Just one lap where I can just get out slipstream range. It's not quite going to happen because it seemed that this, again, this part of the track just was not my strength. The gap came down, two cars behind fighting, in fact. And this might be the um, fighting I need to try to pull away. So the Supra there overtakes uh, this man in the Subaru and goes up into second. And then coming down the hill into Rivage, just look at the back of shot. It is Nisman coming back up the inside and retaking the position. And you see the gap has just slightly opened up between myself and those two. And that's kind of like the fighting I need perhaps to edge away. I don't think I can do it on pure pace. I need those guys to be a bit, um, a bit feisty with their positioning, try to oust each other out. Didn't quite happen though. As we come through Randy on Eau Rouge, lap number five, the gap came back down to under half a second. You see here, not too far away as we uh, go onto the Kemmel Strait, up towards uh, the Lake Com complex. And I was just looking in the rearview mirror, was he close enough? It was quite a close one. I def uh, decided to not defend this time around. Through Lake Com, keeping it nice and planted. The, the tyres just beginning to go off slightly. So definitely conscious of that. But one lap later, I had a bit of a gap, maybe four tenths. It was coming down all the time. And you, you can see that they began to fight. And this is where the race almost unraveled. As we turned in, contact on the apex. I wasn't sure what happened. I cut the corner, rejoined, and then just kept the lead. I thought, okay, well, I mean, I've kind of been pushed off. So I'm just going to cut the corner, rejoin where I was in first, and just have to defend here. I've got slightly dirty tyres courtesy of going off the circuit, but I'm going to keep the lead, going down through Rivage, through the left hander, down the hill. So it looks like um, this is what happened. Subaru covers the inside and then just perhaps lo uh, lost concentration slightly, <laughs> braked a little bit too late, and then there was contact. This was, that, this was actually a really good move from the Supra. You see they're just nipping up the inside, um, or around the outside of the left, gives him the inside of the right and uh, taking second position. So now I have a new threat in the form of the Toyota Supra and the Supra 
is uh, a very dangerous car to try to race against because it's so quick in a straight line. The, uh, the BMW I'm driving, decent in a straight line. That Supra is uh, very, very fast indeed. It'll be very difficult to keep them behind. This man with a two second penalty, you might have spotted that. And they will serve that in a few corners time and drop down the order somewhat uh, with that two second penalty. But here, through the middle sector, I was comfortable and I was able just to edge clear slightly and give myself a bit of breathing room. And uh, the gap there comes up to about seven tenths as we enter the back straight here. There's the penalty zone. In the back of shot there, you can see this man serving the penalty. And then the one Subaru is exchanged for another. So TX3 Evan there in third. Uh, still keeping up the pressure. But I can't really afford to make many mistakes here. Otherwise, I'll lose at least one position, maybe two. And then we have uh, TX3 Steve Gaming there in fourth, driving the Hyundai. So a couple of cars here, close proximity. We have broken away as a group of four of Nissan, uh, Nissan now. Just dropping off the back of the group in fifth. Into the first corner, lap number seven. Pinching the apex nicely, driving out, getting that drive. And this is where things are going to get very difficult for me indeed. The Supra, about three tenths behind, was about as small the gap, as small as the gap has been in the entire race uh, on the exit of turn one. So I knew that this one would be difficult to defend. Flat out through Eau Rouge and Radion. And then the Supra pulls out to the left-hand side, and there's just nothing I can really do about that speed. The only thing I could have done was be a bit quicker, and make the gap a bit bigger before we got to that point of the circuit. But um, it was driven well there by the Spaniard. He gets the slipstream, he gets the speed, and he makes the most of his car's capability on that part of the track. And I, I uh, concede the lead for the first time in the race, halfway into the race. My main job now is to try to tuck into the slipstream and uh, perhaps try uh, to take back the lead. It's going to be quite difficult, given the straight line prowess of the Supra, just kind of plotting where I can do this move again. We all know BMW is strong in these uh, corners here, the middle part of the track, the fast flowing corners. So perhaps I could spring a surprise here, but I'm not quite close enough to so go downhill into this one. Not quite close enough to go for a move at all, and it's not traditionally an overtake corner. You have to be nice and patient here. We've still got half the race left to go, or just just under half the race left. We fly through the right hander towards the back straight. This one's quite a tricky corner. You have to kind of turn in earlier than you think, aim for that bollard, and power out all the way to the outside, almost onto the green. So nice line there, actually. And the Subaru getting closer and closer behind. So it takes to be Evan in the Subaru growing into this race getting slightly stronger as it goes on playing the longer game and uh, the super in front is about to make an un uncharacteristic error here as we get on the brakes i think he braked maybe five ten meters too late it's a little bit wide on the apex of the first uh, chicane or sorry the final chicane the first apex and it's that kind of mistake which we can prey upon hopefully but let's take a look into the first corner not close enough to go for this move into here into the last source if we can rotate the car, get on the power nice and early, he's got all manner of loose on the exit. How are we going to be able to go for the move here? Down the hill, I've run out of steam, so I'm going to tuck back in and try to go for the move at the end of the Kemmel straight. Up the hill we go, and there's just a bit of oversteer mid-turn. And I go over the kerb a tiny bit too much, one pixel too far beyond the track limits, and the stewards are not going to look upon me very favourably there. So we slapped with a half second penalty. Fortunately for me, the guy behind also got a penalty. It's almost like he followed me into that mistake. We're going to serve that penalty here at the end of the lap. And we're going to say goodbye to the Supra. And we're going to exchange the Subaru behind for the Hyundai. As he gets very close into Blanchemont, he doesn't go for the move here. I'm very wary of his presence. You can see him just behind on the radar. There he is. I'm not going to go uh, defensive here. I don't think I have to. And that turned out to be the right decision. And now, it's going to be quite difficult to beat this Supra courtesy of that penalty because he's very quick and he's got a one and a half second gap. It's going to be very hard to try to catch that back up. We're relying on a mistake from that Supra if we want any good chance of winning this race. 
down the hill we go and you see here the pressure is on the pressure is relentless here really because this car just it, <laughs> I've said it a million times but it just is not strong enough out of the slow turns and I'm kind of like a sitting duck here onto the straight and um, Steve Gaming here I'm going to force him to the left which is eventually going to be the outside although I do just get ahead of him He's going to try the inside. I kind of have a half-hearted line in the middle. Give him the space on the inside, but I know that I've got the left-hand corner. So I'm going to retake or keep second place. So it's a really close battle here, and it's going to be very difficult to maintain second place from here to the end. Um, the leader there has just gained about a second already on this lap. And that was a good moment for me there because um, the two TX3 drivers look like a bit of contact perhaps as uh, Steve Gaming went a little bit wide and you can see here the gaps just begin to open up slightly I have over a second to Mr Steve Gaming and giving me a bit of breathing room we've still got three laps left to go at this point here into the first corner uh, the leader did make an error that, uh, at the end of that lap there the gap came down to under two seconds but <laughs> I promptly lost many tenths on the exit of the hairpin again as we go through um, go through Camel Strait, the end of it, the uh, the pressure was not relenting. As you can see, St uh, Steve Gaming walked right back up, and it was going to be very difficult. He wasn't quite close enough on, on lap 10, but how about lap 11? Let's take a look down the hill. Through a Rouge, up Radion. Uh, confident to take that line. He's actually got himself a half second penalty and even though he's got that penalty I don't really want to, to let him get ahead it's still better to defend even with that penalty he goes to the inside I force him very narrow give him just about enough room and it's kind of like before he's got the inside but he doesn't quite have the line and he can't quite get the move done and I've kept him at bay and kept second position uh, how about fourth and fifth? You see there, they're fighting just in the back of the shot. There's two uh, Subarus. And I think it was the right call to keep uh, Steve Gaming and the Hyundai just behind. As you never know, if he could have gapped me on that lap and served his penalty, he could have been right on my tail, even with the penalty. And um, keeping him behind, you see there, the gap opens up quite significantly uh, instead. So it was the right call to keep, uh, to keep him behind, giving me more of, a, more of a gap here going on to the final lap. Um, just having a look behind, the gap opened up to over two seconds at the beginning of lap 12, the final lap. And therefore this lap was really just a case of bringing it home without a penalty. And eventually I did that. It's the final chicane. It was a really good win there, I think, from the Supra. To, to be fair to him, he drove really well. Didn't really make too many mistakes. And I couldn't really do too much about it. So a well-deserved victory for the Spaniard in the Supra. If I'm going to bring it home in second, certainly something that would not have been possible before update 1.13 to, uh, to have a good race here in the BMW M6. Um, so it wasn't a win, but it was very enjoyable and it was a very close race towards the front of the pack and I really enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed watching it. Um, so thank you so much for making it through to the very end of the video. Do drop a like if you enjoyed it and if you're not subscribed, get yourself subbed to the channel and have yourself an amazing day. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.